son is sleeping and snoring <laughs> and uh, we're gonna look for a piece of land for project come it's gonna be quite a long bus ride 32 hours thank you so luckily there is a stop in between in paris and while I was there, I also bought myself a baguette and had yes. a look at this church that burned down, which actually still looked quite okay. I imagined it worse. Now, it doesn't really make that much sense to take the bus, actually, because prices are sort of the same as a plane. plane could actually be cheaper and um, it just takes long. 32 hours in a bus compared to two hours in a plane. And actually, if you include layovers, it takes like 40 hours which is almost two full days compared to two hours so for me the only reason to really go with a bus is that it it uses less carbon less co2 emissions in the air but i was also thinking like is that really the case now the more i really think about it the more i don't know interesting it becomes because if you realize that that bus needs to transport you and move 32 hours compared to a plane just two hours and in a way it runs quite longer but it also needs quite some infrastructure to get you going there it's not just the fuel but also the roads the signs like thousand kilometer of asphalt just to get you on the other place whereas a plane only uses the air or maybe a place to land um, but in a way if you really want to make a calculations and not just based on the co2 it uses but also the whole infrastructure behind it like how is that taken into account and I have to say I'm quite curious to this topic, to dive into it. I also have other stuff on my plate, but it could be an interesting story opera video. But let me know if it's something you would be interested in, because if you guys get motivated, I get motivated. Um, so anyway, now I'm going back into my bus. 32 hour uh, drive, 26 left. Um, I'll see you back when I'm in Portugal. In the meantime, have a look at this clip from Paul and Nate. We're currently doing research of ocean plastic in the Maldives. Yeah. Thanks, Dave. Hope you're enjoying that long bus ride to Portugal. Uh, so Nate and I have been here in the Maldives for almost a couple months now. And one thing we've been doing is research into ocean plastic and how we can recycle that in a way that's effective and useful. Um, so some stuff that we've been finding a lot on the beach is these marine textiles they are made up of really small fibers that just break down really easily and get lost into the environment. Um, they're really hard to collect after that has happened. So we've been doing experiments to see if we can recycle them into more durable, longer lasting forms, which has actually been going pretty well. Um, and so now <clears throat> that we've kind of learned that, we've taken uh, ocean rope, which is one of the most prevalent kinds we're finding, um, to see if we can recycle it not just into these sample tiles, but into something that's actually useful that could be used by people. So um, we've experimented with shredding processes to see uh, what the best way to, to shred the rope is. And, and then we take this shredded material and we've been experimenting with feeding it into the extruder to see if we can extrude it into beams. Um, so we've made some modifications to the hopper to help make it uh, feed into the extruder a little bit better. Um, since the rope is so lightweight, it doesn't really fall in the same way that shredded plastic does with the angled walls. Uh, so the vertical walls help to make it so that the plastic actually um, falls into the gaps between the auger. And then we extrude that plastic into, uh, into beams. And so we found that we can actually take this, uh, this, this fiber that's usually degrading in the ocean into these tiny little bits and pieces and turn it into these stronger, more long-lasting, less degradable beams. And Nate has been, well, we've both been working on um, finding ways that we can make these beams useful. Uh, so Nate's gonna show you a little bit about that. Boom. Hey guys. Uh, yeah, so just like Paul said, we got a uh, big beam construction going on. As always, we've been making all sorts of different things. Uh, more specifically, these great hanging chairs. Um, we saw these sorts of things uh, as soon as we got to the island. Um, they're called Jolie chairs. Figured beams would be a great 
use for kind of reconstructing the frames of the chairs. So we whipped out some beams. Uh, Paul made some excellent like lap joints, so they're nice and square. Uh, and we're able to do this really cool net sort of technique and make them so you can hang out in them. Very comfy. We've also got the bench. We also have a nice bench. Cool step. Lots to do. Yeah. Well, that's what we've been up to. Uh, yeah, we've been documenting it in the forums. If you're interested, you can see our whole process there. Uh, yeah, see you guys next month. See you next month. All right, so we're now in the sunny Portugal looking uh, for the land. This is the first one we're going to visit, actually also the biggest one. Here's the crew hanging around, looking at the other side. So here's like a ruin, they have rocks we could climb back there. Ruin. So this is a very big thing. Um, so yeah, we're just going to watch more of them and see which one would fit for the one. Adrian and Caterina, we are in Portugal trying to get the knowledge and introduce ourselves for the next year to come with Project Camp here. So, <clears throat> the first week we were meeting some architects and visiting some other sustainable projects here in the, in the area for having the knowledge for can, how can we start doing projects like this. So, <clears throat> from the architect we already learned what can we build in each land, what we have to ask to the real estate agents, what to take in account in each land um, yeah from then the, the sustainable projects all the process the legal process to how to start a project like this yeah so after getting to know all these uh, background information and processes how it works here uh, we started looking at properties and within like 10 days or two weeks we saw 30 properties more focused in the central area of Portugal just yeah, to get a feeling for how big it actually is. So we've seen small ones, bigger ones, more, some with more mountains uh, and a river and some with yeah, more flat land and like useful land. Yeah, we've seen a lot of different ones and every, every one of them was really nice, but um, had different specialities to offer like a big rock or castle. There's a lake, very nice forest here. Yeah. River, waterfall. Huge cork tree! Fake tree, fake tree, orange tree, olive trees. And then we made the selection of, um, of the properties and showed it to uh, Dave and Mattia Hello. to make them also get the feeling for uh, the areas and what we actually like. What's next? We will now, from this selection, narrow even more down to uh, what, we really, what selection we really like and then go more into specifics so um, get the architect get architects and the, a lawyer and um, set up a company and talk to the municipalities to then decide um, which one works for us so if there's any portuguese in this area like it's mostly castelo branco coimbra and viseu the municipalities are going to be more or less fundão daña nova penamacor tabua lusa and oliveira do hospital so if there's any Portuguese around that can help us, please let us know. And as always, we will keep you updated in the forums. Uh, link is in the description. And um, now Charlotte will continue with the monthly news. No, community news. Yeah, yeah. Bye. Bye. Yo, it's Charlotte and I'm going to be talking to you about the community news from our lovely community from all around the world again. And to kick off the feature, I'm going to be talking about Precious Plastic Ukraine. They have just made this super sick bench that has just been placed into the capital city, Kiev. 
The bench is made from recycled plastic. It's made using plastic beams. Um, the colour is really nice and I love the, like, the speckles in it from the different types of plastic. And the design is also really nice with this kind of curve that they have. And what I just love about this bench is it just shows the potentials of recycled plastic. The way it's done to such a high standard, it's super nice to see and also to see such a big object as well rather than just small things. So very, very nice work. And next is a designer based out in Norway. Um, he has taken old plastic straws that are being thrown out from the shift from plastic back to paper. So he's taken all these plastic straws which would either go in landfill or to our precious oceans. And he's making these nice little flutes with them. Um, so he's made a, he's CNC milled a mold. And yeah, he's just using the injection machine and making these really nice little flutes. But just a really nice idea because as we make this shift from plastic back to paper, all these plastic straws are just being thrown out. So it's a nice idea to actually make use of them. And this is another favourite of mine. Um, one of our workspaces all the way out in Singapore are making these really cool card holders and handbags and tote bags, all made from recycled plastic bags. And once again, just making really high-end finished quality product that looks super cool. And they've even achieved this kind of like fake animal uh, leather look, which is super impressive. And hopefully we'll start replacing materials such as leather or canvas, which are usually made for bags. And they also do custom made designs. Um, so if you want anything specific, they can do that for you, which is also really cool. And to close the feature, I have to mention that we had our first drop-off session this month. Now that we are halfway through the project, we are starting to finish machine testing and machine developing, and we're now moving into the product design phase, which is super exciting. Um, but in order to make these products, we need a lot of plastic. And so we thought we'd ask local people, local business owners, hairdressers, cafe owners, to come in and donate their unwanted plastic. She's the best. <laughs> But we will be having more of these drop-off days, so if you're passing through the country or passing through Eindhoven, uh, just keep up to date and we'll be posting more of these dates soon. And that is it for me this month. Thank you again for watching. I hope it was fun and interesting. If it wasn't, I'm sorry. And if you're building machines, you're creating products around the world, use the hashtag Precious Plastic so we can see what you're up to. It's always super inspiring to see the kind of weird and wonderful things uh, you guys are creating. And also thank you to our Patreon supporters who contribute to the project each and every month. Thank you, goodbye.